this being an election season in the states, uh, it's how much has it changed the dialogue about how to deal with Islamic terrorism? Uh, just when you have candidates putting different policy proposals out there, how does that change the dialogue? Well, on the one hand, it, because it's in the top two or three issues, which is national security and global terrorism and ISIS, uh, it has raised some attention. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, because politicians, there's three, four, 15 of them, <laughs> um, there is a drive-by nature to the discussion. And unfortunately, when there's a drive-by nature, it allows only a superficial touch of the issues. Uh, and unfortunately, when it's superficial, it causes a almost at times a malpractice, if you will, of dealing with the depth and understanding because what happens is it, that superficiality prevents the depth of understanding that the American public, I think, needs to have as they engage in changing policies to the better in the future. How would you advise a candidate to bring up this issue, knowing that they don't have hour-long speeches they can give yeah. that people will listen to? How would you help them frame the debate? I'd frame it that we have an existential threat to America greater than we've ever had before. Current policies have been an abysmal failure. A world where America is absent is not a safe place. Our enemies will fill those vacuums, be it Russia, Iran, or anyone who hates freedom and liberty. And lastly, when you deal with radical Islam or radical Islamists, we need to thread that needle as America did in its history, where we, we are a Christian nation founded against theocracy for freedom of religion and all freedom. Muslims can thread that needle too, and we need, we need to separate between generalizing about all Muslims and also be courageous enough to identify that the threat is Islamists. So Americans are savvy enough to separate between Islamists that are a political movement that threatens freedom mm -hmm. and Muslims who can be part of the solution. You have been engaged in this, this discussion and trying to bring this dialogue forward for some time now. Are you feeling progress in a, in a good direction? We are. I mean, if you look at where we came from in 2003 when we formed, uh, people were wondering what we were talking about when we said we need to separate mosque and state. Now, ISIS and the, the, the vacuum of the Arab awakening has legitimized and validated what we stand for. But having said that, at times it's three steps forward and four steps back, where uh, there is often demagoguery and other things that happens that really sets us back in educating America about how to thread that needle. But I think Americans will eventually get this right and begin to uh, not only pick candidates, but uh, to pick policies that are smart and head us in the right direction to uh, work with Muslims that believe in freedom and be courageous enough to confront Muslims that are uh, advancing theocracy, autocracy, and threats to our way of life. If there was one policy you would say, I would start here, what would it be? Changing the mantra of countering violent extremism which I don't know what that is, to countering violent Islamism that then allows us to engage reformers within the Muslim community that recognize that Islamism is the problem and extremism is the endpoint of an ideological pathway of Islamism towards extremism. Dr. Jasser, thank you very much for talking with us. Anytime, thank you.